Today, Nori and I are wandering in the woods with the 4x5 camera. Why don't you come along for the ride? As usual, my film today is Milford's FP4+. Plus. Today, we're going old school. We've uh, left all of our digital cameras at home. And we're just going out with a large format today. I'm just gonna enjoy the, uh, the outdoors. Nice little pace. Another reason I'm out here with my large format camera is I've recently made some changes to that camera. And I've installed a Fresnel lens to the back of it in hopes that I could actually see what I'm looking at. <laughs> if any of you do large format photography, you know what I'm talking about when, you, when I say how dark the image can be, especially with wide angle lenses. On this camera, I couldn't see anything at the edges. A lot of the photography I've done for the past few months has just been guessing. And I'd rather not guess. <laughs> so I uh, purchased a Fresnel lens for focusing. And we're going to see how that works. When I bought the camera, I knew I'd probably have to do that. But I thought I'd go ahead and use it for a while without it. I installed the screen on the back of the camera on top of the ground glass instead of in front of the ground glass because the camera is designed to have the film where the ground glass is so when you slide the film holder in your, uh, your, your focus should be accurate. Hopefully sticking the, uh, the screen on the back of the camera will still give me enough brightness to make it worth doing. And that's something we're going to be finding out today. Go. Oh. Well, we just finished out here with the, uh, the these really thick high ferns, like chest high in these ferns. And these trees kind of poking up out of them looks, uh, I thought was kind of interesting. We got some moss and, and some peeling bark here on this first tree. A little bit of a breeze. I, I don't mind a little bit of motion blur in the foliage. You know, that's, that's just the way it is sometimes. The trees are gonna add enough sharpness for an anchor in the image, so I, I when I'm doing large format photography, sometimes there's going to be a little bit of motion blur in the foliage. That's okay. It doesn't bother me that much. So as long as there's sharpness somewhere, <laughs> you know, typically anyway. I mean, that's my goal anyway. Most, most of the uh, movement won't be noticeable. Probably only closest to the lens. This one was, was a little bit of a challenge to uh, to set up because it's so thick in here, it was hard to get around to the front of the camera. I've got my 90 millimeter on. This is about 22 point, you know, 22 and a half, something like that. It's just a challenge to try to make a composition in here. That's the best kind though, you know, ones that you have to work a little bit for. I think I'm going to look for one more composition. I may only get a couple today. That's large format, you know. I, I still got time, but I think uh, two or three compositions may be what I what I get today. That's kind of my my goal. All right, let's let's uh, pack up and look for something else. Come. Come on, Nori. 
Come on. Come here. Something is something is spook Nori. She's not liking it here, so I'm gonna take her cue and I'm gonna follow where she backtrack a little bit and follow her. So uh, something ahead's got her a little spooked. You really should trust the senses of your dog if you're gonna bring one. She's not uh, wanting to go this direction. Now, I'm not sure what she's smelling or sensing over that way, but we're gonna go back to where we came because I don't think she wants to uh, continue on this way. So we won't be photographing anything in here. Let's go, Nori. Lead the way, girl. When you're out by yourself in the woods, you, you probably should pay attention to what your dog is telling you. And she's just not having any of it. She just... Now it could be that she's just uh, not familiar with the smells, sights and sounds of the woods, but she's been in the woods quite a bit, so... She's still just a little over a year old. So we're going to head back the way we came and look for a shot somewhere else. That'd be a better way. Now I'm pretty sure she's not really since seeing smelling anything or seeing anything that's dangerous. You know, it's probably just a deer or elk or something. But we do have a lot of mountain lion and black bear in these woods, so it doesn't hurt to be a little bit wary. Play it safe. And uh, I'm gonna let her trust her instincts a little bit. She's she still seems a little bit skittish. She keeps stopping and looking down the trail and she's a good woods companion though. I think uh, when I'm setting up a shot and I'm really engrossed in an image under the dark cloth and that kind of thing, it's nice to have another set of eyes and ears kind of keeping track of what's going on around. I don't see cougar too often, but I have. I've seen them, and I've seen the black bear as well. I don't have any bear spray, which is something I probably should carry, but you know, you, when you live in, a, in these woods all your life, or this area, it's just not one of those things we think about, because most likely a black bear in, in here is going to be running, running from you. I would be a little bit more wary of the uh, cougar if I'm not paying attention and I'm working on taking a picture. But sometimes you get that, that hair in the back of your neck, <laughs> it starts to, to go up. You, uh, you gotta pay attention to that. You gotta be uh, in tune with what's around you. Well, you can see I've changed locations and if you've seen my vi recent videos this might look familiar to you I was here about a month ago I actually wasn't seeing much where we were so I thought well let's drive down the mountain and revisit the area we were well, not that long ago and it looks quite a bit different than it did the last time we were here the, uh, we've had some rain and the vegetation is starting to uh, turn around here. It's still kind of slow, but uh, it is looks quite a bit different than last time I was here. Well, I just made a frame with this uh, plant here in the foreground. 
a little bit of a tremor. I, I, I'm not sure if it was moving very much when I took the exposure, about a one second exposure. I, I really like the pattern, the texture on these rocks and how this plant's growing up out of it. And then this light colored foliage and then some the foliage reflection, reflecting in the water. So a wide angle lens, so I, it's kind of a, one of those Hail Mary passes, you know. I, there's just so much going on in this scene, I'm having a hard time uh, in this low light getting, seeing enough of the, the elements to uh, make it uh, where I feel like I might have something here. I'm sure every large format photographer struggles with composition at times, especially when they don't use the camera that much. <laughs> It's so hard to go back and retrain when you when you're used to using 35 millimeter, you know, looking through the lens at a nice bright image. At times, it's this has been a struggle. I, I mean, it's gonna be honest about it. I, if I don't, I, and a part of it is my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. <laughs> I'm having to wear, wear reading glasses, and that is becoming an issue with my camera in my eyes it might not be that the viewfinder is dark it might be that my eyes just aren't that good <laughs> anymore i'm getting up there in age um, that might be my biggest limitation right now is is my vision i may have to just <laughs> that dog <laughs> i may have to pick my my uh, gear based around my uh, physical abilities that's a sad sad thing to say that's that might be the reality of of my photography in the future i'm not ready to give up on this but i'm i mean I, i'd be lying if i wasn't if i didn't say i wasn't struggling a little bit even with the uh fre fluorescent lens on it it's uh still pretty dark i'm just gonna take my last frame on this section stream here I kind of like how the rocks are carved, are carved by the water. Not, I really don't like this spot all that much, but I may, I may have to do some cropping. But there's enough negative there to let me do a little cropping. I probably should have a polarizing filter on this, but I don't have one to fit this lens. So I've got a 135 millimeter on here right now. It's a half second exposure, about F32. Something like that. A little bit, a little bit discouraged today. I, it's you know, I don't know photo-wise what I have. I, I just I feel like I'm, I'm fighting my gear, you know. <laughs> And uh, I was hoping adding that Fresno lens was going to make a big difference. And, and it has made a difference. Just not as much as I was hoping. And I'm, I'm a little frustrated with that. So I've got to think about what to do next. But I will be going out with uh, the color stuff here. I might come back here probably next week or at least at the end, maybe at the end of the week. I'll be back in this area with, uh, with the digital camera and try to get some fall color shots too. Today I just wanted to uh, work with that, work with the 4x5 camera and, and see if uh, we could uh, get along a little bit better. I really think there's gonna, there's a lot of photos here. A lot of potential. I've said that before. I, uh, I really like this spot. I, I like all the rock and all the colorful foliage. So we'll be back uh, before the season's over, I think. So I think we're going to end this video right here.
Until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.